so you're filming in the middle of the pandemic and the shit it's the fan mm-hmm. one of them tests positive what yeah. that is just sounds to me like an absolute nightmare and be, and you must have been so gutted because you are putting all these things in place these safety measures making sure so on top of everything we've already said now you're a safety advisor pandemic advisor <laughs> World Health Organization trying to make sure everyone's healthy, and then it just takes one person to become positive. What are you going to do to recover? Did you have things in place, or did you just think, I'm just not going to imagine it happening? Yeah, I mean, okay, so back in February, we, we were making a decision do we do the film this mm-hmm. year, or do we decide to leave it another year? I felt that if I left it another year, I'd be into year eight of making this movie. And oh, I yeah. just felt, I just felt as though it would never start. Um, so in February, the, there was a government roadmap, June the 20th, <laughs> was when everything was going to Government open. roadmap. Oh my God. <laughs> but I thought, you know what? I'm going to take the risk. So June the 20th was when we decided we would start our first block. Oh, we're going to put them into blocks. Yeah. Block A will start June the 20th. Block B, July the 19th, amazingly. So obviously when June the 20th came up and the road, you know, the freedoms were not going to happen. We'd already made a decision that we were going to shoot with masks and COVID and, yeah. and all the sterilizing and all the safety measures. We, we had yeah. all of that in. I had an amazing assistant. I mean, I'm very, very proud, by the way, of the fact that most, uh, I've got a majority of my crew are female. Yeah. Um, and they bring a completely different perspective. And, I, and I, my, my production assistant, second AD, Sarah Michelle, give her a shout out. She wrote a COVID handbook of how oh, we were going to operate. Yeah. Um, I mean, these are the lengths we went to um, to ensure that we could be safe and safe with each other. Yeah. yeah. And we had, we had a lot of extras in lots of tight locations. It, it made our shooting days from eight hours to 15 hour days. Oh, nightmare. Try directing a crew and keeping yeah. them motivated. It was punishing. But we thought, great. And then we got to June the 19th, and it really was going to open up on June the 19th. Not realizing that actually that made our risks even bigger because suddenly we were hitting a pandemic and, and more people mixing and was actually going to make it probably more dangerous for us yeah. and I suddenly thought you know what we should have tried to just film this last year when nothing was open but morally I thought I don't want to go and shoot in a pub yeah when it's that difficult. pub can't even have people in to drink yeah of course it's it just felt wrong for me so I thought we'll stick with it, the rules so it was five days before we were due to shoot our second block on July the 19th and my worst nightmare I had 50-50 anticipated that somebody could. Mm. And there was probably two or three people who we would have coped with. Yeah. If costume had gone, yeah. we could cope. We could get the costumes and cope. Production goes, we could all muck in. Yeah. Makeup, mm. camera, definite no. Sound, definite no. I wouldn't get replacements yeah. and we couldn't replace them. Actors, <laughs> disaster and it was one of the lead actors oh. and, he go, and he goes um nightmare he goes sorry i've just po- tested positive he said but i've got to self-isolate for 10 days um is there anything else you can shoot i went you're in every scene mate oh nightmare we literally couldn't shoot anything and um it was it was a, a stressful 24 hours literally we had about 30 people to contact Oh. We had 30 extras. Now, you know how difficult getting extras are <laughs> for a day, right? It's really, really hard. And we just got two days of 20, 30 extras at each day. Oh, my God. We had to phone them all up and go, it's off next week. Oh, nightmare. Um, I went into, you know, I talked about director head, producer head. Yeah. I decided to go into producer head. I knew if I, st- if I went into stayed in director head, I would get too emotional and I'd have a break. <laughs> yeah. 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 I thought, but pr- I know producer head can be quite pragmatic, yeah. quite unemotional. That's my, that's my unemotional side. 
Yeah. And I went to producer mode. I phoned everybody up. I personally phoned up everybody and said, look, this is the deal. Yeah. Um, and, and I, I smoothed out. I, even that night, I even went to the locations. I drove there, the pubs and stuff. I said, look, I'm sorry. Um, oh. and, um, and she said, I can tell in your eyes, because we wear masks. She said, I can tell in your eyes, you're just dying inside. I went, you know. Hey, it's, I, where I you re- it's where you really have to pull it out of the bag. And, and, and it's such a cliche, but you have to turn around and say, look, no one's died, you know, and it's true. You have to go to that depth where you go. And as a filmmaker, we are inherently, we have to have that because, yeah, yeah. I mean, that it's terrible what's happened, but it, it's happened on numerous sets where other things have come up, you know, and, and people have been ill or that lead actor. I mean, look, when Tom Cruise broke his ankle, I mean, I know it's totally yeah. different. They've got millions and millions, but someone must have been going shit somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and it's just... The bottom line that, is... It almost, gives you, it almost gives you that determination that we all have as filmmakers, because I bet you turn around after 24, after 24 or 48 hours when you sort of coming around and you're like, fuck it, we, we will get this done. We'll, we'll come up with another date. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I've said this a few times. Um, it's, I will eventually get to make this movie. I will <laughs> finish it. But yeah. I... But for a lot of people, 180,000 people this year, they haven't made the day or they haven't made the week or they haven't made that month. Mm. Put it into perspective. We're still around to do what we love doing. They aren't. And I keep reminding myself that in the scheme of things, it might take another year. I might go a bit grayer. Yeah. But they didn't have a choice. Mm. Yeah, necessarily yeah. you know yeah, yeah. and um th- that was in the back of my mind I've, I've i've always tried to make this movie in a really safe way i knew we were going to hit problems but I, I think as long as it still hurts i mean yeah, of course yeah i mean I, I went into director mode on the saturday so four days later and i i had a meltdown mm. oh even yeah. though even though i fixed it all i'd even set the new dates by then yeah i'd even rescheduled the movie i mean unfortunately we've had to wait another six weeks to shoot some of it and some of it we've had to wait three months i can't do it till october because of crew availability and location availability october from july yeah but but i literally had a meltdown um Mm. Mm. And that was, I think that was the bottled up emotion. That's the mental health thing I was yeah. talking about. And that's, that- and that's, that's where your support comes in, you know, and knowing yourself. And we yeah, talk yeah. about mental health a lot on the show. And it is having that awareness and saying, look, I'm not okay. You know, I'm not sure. I'm not 100%. And other and just and sort of bouncing off of other people. I think the worst thing you can do is just clamp up, not say anything, and and that and that's the key. You just turn around and say, "I'm not feeling right. I've got burnout, or I'm I'm I'm, I'm not feeling mental health's not well." Um, and that's the way through it, really, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm very lucky that I'm able to split mm. emotion from practical, mm. and I knew that if I stayed in producer head, I'd sort the shit out. And then I would allow myself to grieve. That <laughs> yeah. effectively is what yeah. was happening. I, w- I was grieving because hmm. it's something you love, built oh, up God, to yeah. it. And, and, and I got to about lunchtime and, and I was watching, um, I was watching Making the Cut. I think it was something about making clothes and how passionate they were about what they were doing. And even in the pandemic, the money allowed them to bubble and to make it. And I, th- and, and, and I thought, that's all I want to do. <laughs> yeah. And that was the point. So that's all, that was the point. It was something and yeah, I, just, it's... I just literally crumbled. In the end, um, I just phoned up Jason, who I did the songs with, and went, should we go and have some vinyl therapy? <laughs> yeah. Because I hadn't spent a single penny on myself all year, because obviously everything goes into the film. Yeah. And we just met up in town, in Leamington, and... and um, and we just went and bought some vinyl. It was record store day. And we just, yeah. it, and honestly, yeah. it, it was, it was just literally being able to take my mind away from something else. Mm, if it and, worked, yeah. 
and, and, and I said, look, I, I'm, this is my plan. Does this plan work? Do you think I could? And I actually said, this is what's been going on in my head. This is how I want to solve this. And he goes, sounds perfect to me. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I went home and I was, and maybe because it was a bit sunny as well, it was nice and warm. I went home feeling completely different. And yeah, I think it's, it's, it's good. It's, it's good what you say there. It, sometimes it's a process. And yeah. I remember just before pandemic hit and I was getting the musical score done for a kidnap. Uh, I was going over to Italy to do it in the studio, you know, plane ticket booked, everything. It was all, we're all going in the right direction. It all just come crashing down. And it is like you say, grief. And yeah. But you can't, it's difficult because like other people don't understand. And you're like, I want to, I am grateful, you know, because I'm still healthy, but you can't help but have that grief. And I think the key is having a process, like you said, just going and buying some vinyl. For me, it's usually watching hundreds of films, or it might be taking the dog for a walk, or going for a run, or, or it's just having something. I think the worst thing you can do is just sit there and and stew on it that is the worst thing yeah i think i think the thing with mental health and we are we've seen it with some of the so ben stokes people going oh well he's weak because he comes out and says this mm. like ben stokes is probably one of the most mentally complex strong characters around yeah a breakdown or whatever's happened in his life to for him to go i'm taking an indefinite stop from something i love Hmm. That hasn't just, he's not just woke up and thought that. That's been building up for some time and some time. And it's because he's a mentally strong person that every day he's battling that. He's hmm. battling the expectations of a nation, thinking that, you know, he can win the ashes on his own. He's got the expectations of himself because he, even the most creative people like me and you, we're doubting our ability all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, the, and, and he'll worst, be doubting his ability. And, the, and so they're battling all of this. And so people think, oh, it just happens. It doesn't. It, that would have been probably a year's worth of being in bubbles and stuff. And, and one day I'm going, I've won. It's, it, this is the thing. It's a bit like boxing, right? We're in the Olympics and I'm, I'm kind of enjoying this. Yeah. You could box every round and win on points. And the last punch of that, of the 10th round, you get knocked out. Right. You can win every battle yeah. and still lose the war by one thing, a bit like my COVID positive. Everything else we did right, but that one five-minute test derailed us. Same with Ben Stokes. It would have just been, he could have won every mental battle for the last year. And then suddenly, yeah. right? And what, uh, what, what makes me laugh about this is and the big uh, media story is that Simone, the gymnast from America, is years ago it would never happen. Okay, so years ago, p p there's there's two sides of thinking. You know, what a what a load of rubbish. He should just carry on. He's a professional. And years ago it wouldn't happen. But imagine if he hadn't have said anything or Simone hadn't have said anything, they'd have carried on, and then they end up committing suicide down the line it, at least they're brave enough to say uh, to say right actually now i can actually say something because you know it's ironic isn't it we all say you should talk you should say something and yet they're getting criticized when they say i'm pulling out for mental health well that's exactly what we've been saying is you should say something so i think yeah. these people are ben stokes and that simone i can't remember a second name i think that I is also, brilliant yeah. what they're doing because it shows, and because they're at the top of the game, people yeah, yeah. Learn to think, you know, if I'm suffering from mental health, uh, you know, then, then I'm going to say something. And, and they've got a lot more pressure on than the normal people, haven't they? I think so. You know, I mean, they're, they're under immense pressure and they're, they're battling that every single day in ways we can't do. Oh, God. I mean, I mean, you know, we talk about how I felt, you know, just having that bad news that's nowhere near what they're going oh, under God. i'm not under the gaze of a million people and and adulation and all the things that go on there yeah um i'm, I'm not competing for gold medals or trying to you know get 180 <laughs> not <did> yet <laughs> well you know <laughs> Yeah. Right. So what's uh, what's for the future then, Darren? So is the future now looking forward and thinking where you can start refilming and things like that? Or have you got other things on the go? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously the future, the immediate future, I'll say in the next 12 months, is to get the film finished. We have a schedule. We've had to reschedule. Um, my plan is, is that 
perhaps this time next year I'll have a movie completely finished because um, it'll be in post for a while. Um, yeah. I we, we funny we talk about theatre. I've really missed doing theatre. That's the one one thing I've sacrificed in order to make this film. I couldn't mm. do both. My last movie, I actually directed two plays during the middle of making the film. Yeah. Um, so um, Image and I have when we thought we couldn't make this film, we started to write um, a 50 minute one woman show. Cause we've always talked about taking a show to Edinburgh. Oh, brilliant. Expensive, um, but brilliant. <laughs> yeah. So, well, compared to making films, well, really yeah, true. <laughs> when you put um, it like that, yeah. <laughs> so, so, um, uh, so I'm, I think the next thing I'm going to do is take this show. What we'll do is we'll probably, take it around the Midlands and trial it out. Yeah. Brilliant. Then go and do some of the fringe like Brighton, London, um, oh. Chelmsford, make the money there and then go and lose it all up in Edinburgh. Um, <laughs> wow. I just, and I just, I just think, you know, it'll be a one woman show. We can travel lights. We could take it anywhere we want. We can keep it rolling for a while. Um, I bet Imogen's chomping the bit on that, isn't she? Because yeah, because seeing, seeing, we actually seeing the ta how talented she is, you know. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. We, uh, to be able to write a story with the person as well. Exactly, and you know, and I I know her well, and I know how she acts. I've directed her a lot, um, and um, I mean, we actually started to write it as a kind of like a ten minute, uh, six ten minute. Um, little episodes in January when we thought we couldn't do this. So we actually wrote three episodes to film and we were going to do it using cameras in the house and people over Zoom and stuff. Um, I'm glad we did now because I think some things will work perhaps a bit more immediate. Yeah. In the same way that Fleabag worked really brilliantly on stage, oh, yeah. then she had to completely change it. And it worked well on TV, um, but it did propel her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, you get it. And um, and uh, and I think Definitely. this would be a good way for people to see how good she is and how talented she is. Brilliant. Um, stuff. Plus, also, it's a bit of fun for us, you know. And yeah. um, good. I think that's definitely the next thing. Good and of course, good. yeah. Of course, I've got to make the next movie, and I've got to add a naught to it. So you know, we're gonna. Do, I need yeah. this one to do really well. So <laughs> you're a bright, you're a brave man, a brave man. Uh, now we always ask a bit of advice from a guest. It can be the best bit of advice you've had, or to Ooh. maybe another filmmaker or a creative. What is it? Well, well, I think I think I I already said one earlier, which was like, if you want a job done, ask a busy person, and until you're the busy person like me and you, you won't realise how how <laughs> true that is. Yeah. Um, but okay, I, I I saw one of your um, podcasts the other week with John Francois. Mm, yes. Um, a fantastic podcast that was, and, they, and people should watch it. He's got a great really, really good. He's got a great one. And, and you asked him this question, and, uh, and he came off the top of your head, the three Ps. Yes. Passion, patience, persistence. Brilliant. So yeah. here you are. I'm going to give you five Bs. <laughs> It'll start a trend. Everyone's going to come up with some, all these different things. Oh, no, yeah, these an analogies and acronyms and oh, my God. Yeah. Go on. So when I was doing my first play, and, I, and because you've never done it before, you, you have no barometer as to whether you're doing good. And, uh, and I was having a bit of a meltdown at a party about a week before. And this director goes, because Darren, I'm sure you're doing really well. He says, I'm sure you'll know what you're doing, and I'm sure it's going to be fine. You've got an amazing cast. He says, I'll, I'll give you some advice. He said, you are for theatre, and this is something for you to learn. You only need to know five things. Make sure be seen, be clear, be heard, be understood, and believe in themselves. Quite a lot of that, yeah, yeah. It's very good. And and in theatre, obviously, you know, be seen, be heard, be clear, be understood. You know, it's all about their presence on stage and and belief. Yeah. But then I I've taken that into everything I've done. Well, you can good. do it in theatre, you can do it in music, you can do it in life, mm. um, you can apply it to social media, you can apply that to everything. So there you are, there's my five Bs.